Ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, hey look at hey, me. I'm, I'm over here off off camera. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? What happened? You keep going. I, I can't perform improv, by myself. Improv, improv. Uh, uh, rain in Spain comes mainly down the plane. There it is. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Homebrew Guys, your monthly podcast about homebrewing and brewing and uh, brewing and also brewing. I'm your host. Brewing. <laughs> brewing collegially Phillips. Here, oh my goodness! This is gonna, this is gonna, it's just bouncing around. It looks like we're right. having a fracking earthquake here. Oh, hey! Uh, shout out to everybody, other brewer, <laughs> everybody in the <laughs> chat tonight. Let's take a look. We got Faywood Mead, Adept Nonsense, Bedrick, Larry, Pocky Man, as seen on TV, Tiger Pat, Renee, Yip Yo, that guy. That guy's here. Fun Pants. Did I say Pocky Man already? I did. What up, everybody? BC, would you like to know what I poured you tonight? Yeah, tell me what's okay, on the I table here. I've given BC three glasses. Yeah. Fresh pours from the Man Made Mead Laboratories. <laughs> laboratories. <laughs> you have a Moscow Mule, which is a little, ha little hazy boy. This one. Hazy, hazy man. Okay, and then we have apple cinnamon. You're familiar with it. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Steven. Ooh. And new blueberry. Uh, not hopped. Just newberry. New noobberry. New blueberry. <laughs> yeah, just blueberry, <clears throat> light, hopefully crushable. If you can't tell, there is a whole host of illness uh -huh, uh -huh. flowing through Oklahoma right if now. Your hair's talking like this. And, and we. Right. I've been here. I've been here since like five, and we've. Probably blown our noses 50 times each since then. <laughs> yep, yep, I agree. It's so bad right now. And so our palates are a little off, our noses are a little off, but we're here doing it anyway. You we're doing it live. Ginger, I heard, really invigorates the palate. Yeah, yeah. So this is what now? <laughs> Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule. You didn't serve this in a copper cup? I, listen, man. Just, listen, man. Only somewhat of the best here. <laughs> Very, uh, very. It is. Ah, uh, that's gingery. It is ginger. I mean, I'm here for it. Uh, man, uh, Tiger Pet says uh, t Tiger Pat, not <laughs> Tiger Pet. He's not petting tigers. Well, he might be petting Dang. tigers. It says friends stop by, busy getting the mice. He's watching with his friends, and you should be too. This should be an event for you every month. <laughs> every, <laughs> if you're not here. Yeah. What, what uh, are we doing here, BC? We've got not only people watching on video, <laughs> we've also got people listening in their cars, in the train. That's on true. The Anywhere subway. podcasts are heard. Yeah, they're on the subway. <laughs> yeah. It's in like the New a, York subway right now. If you're on the New York subway, <laughs> right in, it's tell like us a, about the person on your left. Who 2002 iPod commercial. Yeah. They're, they're in Technicolor. They're dancing yeah. on the subway, listening Listen to, to the us. Homebrew Guys podcast. We we love you and so glad you are committing your yeah, it's time. It's a real thing. <laughs> to us. Shout out to the 24 people watching. We're going to do our best to, to be energetic tonight, despite... Listen, I got three glasses of mead. You just give me a few minutes. We already had a few. We shot some Palette Expanders episodes oh, prior did. to this. For those of you who are fans. For those of you. The, the show that, uh, by the way, the show that we end up... We bring bottles to each other without telling each other what we bring. Mm -hmm. The goal is to taste both brews, and the other person has to say what the other person brought. And so yeah. we're expanding our palates. Um, I named it that and realized it's also a very gross process that young kids go through to expand their actual palates. And so do not it Google is. palate expanders yeah. and expect to get us. <clears throat> yeah, just, yeah. Close your eyes when you click. Yeah, <laughs> just in case. And you're gonna you're gonna pull up our our our, our outline here on this oh, computer. Oh yeah. Too, right? Oh yeah. You don't have it memorized? No, you I didn't don't. Study it. <laughs> so we've got a an action packed show for you. This is the Homebrew Guys podcast. So as you may be aware, we're gonna go through some of the the brewing relevant news yes. of the last month. Uh huh. We've got a couple of chatterbox segments here, and we're also going to talk about some of the social media highlights of the Ooh. month. 
And so that's an encouragement for you on his Discord, on my Discord channel, or somewhere else on the internet, on Facebook groups, on Reddit, on winemaking talk, whatever, to post your stuff out there in the world. We take a look at it every month, mm-hmm. figure out what we think is most interesting or compelling, and then we talk about it here. Yeah. So you could be featured on this show if if your homebrewing stuff is cool enough. Yes. I will say one definitive it's high factor bar. for me when I look for interesting mead content or wine or homebrewing content in general is um, the right amount of words. <laughs> right? What I mean by that is people who post a picture of their uh, Fruity Tutti Mead and then they have 17 paragraphs explaining how they got to the Fruity Tutti Mead. <laughs> yeah. I generally will check out pretty quick. Because okay. Because that that's too much for me. This, now, I don't know about you, if you enjoy 17 paragraphs about I, Fruity Tutti. It depends. It, you know, if if they post it, if okay, so like if it's on Reddit, mm-hmm. and if they're tagged like Intermediate or Master, and they post a picture of a Tutti Fruity Mead, and then they have like five paragraphs explaining how they got to this amazing thing, I might be here for that, because I might learn something. But if they're not the Master... If they're a beginner, and their review is, eh... I got drunk off it. I might be less inclined to read their five paragraphs. It all depends on context. It is not to dissuade you from talking about your stuff. In fact, we want you to, but I do think that sometimes people need to ask questions before the answer is shown. Hello, the crinkled one says, oh my God, I caught a live. No meads at the moment, but just started a Weissen beer (laughs) beer. with added orange and coriander. That sounds nice. It sounds like it might be something to help us kick this cold. Yeah, thought the ginger would help. I don't know if it is. Uh, it's, it's, it's burning things a little bit. You ready to jump into In the Brews? In the Brews. This Remember, is our... you oh. said you were going to do a, a, a theme song for these at some point. Um, do 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 live. Boom, bum, bum. I got you, I got you. Well, okay, bum, well. bum, 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 bum. Hold on, hold on. Improv, improv. Uh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Deedly dee. Here they are, standing in a row. Ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. That's all the lyrics from Lion King. I don't know the rest of the song. Oh, you've got a flute. <laughs> there you go. We're getting alive. Do a little... Dun, 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 Yankee Doodle. That's, that's a pretty poor rendition of Yankee Doodle, also. In the Bruise! <laughs> in the Bruise! The most patriotic news show to grace your television Not or <laughs> portable devices oh, um, in, um, in business class on the plane. Don't worry, there'll be way more, way more, maybe not Yankee Doodle, but other things to come. Let's see. <laughs> Why not more Yankee Doodle? Why not just all Yankee there Doodle? There are other, other countries that we're representing. Hopefully. Other countries Reaching that we're out representing. Uh, so first up in the brews, we've got White Labs introducing their Flex Brink for commercial yeast harvesting. Did you see Ooh, this thing? Yes, I did. So it's like a big fat plastic bag that, that you hook up <laughs> to your commercial brewing system and it lets you harvest yeast so you can save money. On yeast in your brewery. Yeah, I'm, I had the, a bad medical visioning side of, you know, people. Yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna go there. This so is... the cool thing about this <laughs> is they they hit it with gamma rays to sterilize it or sanitize it, I guess. It says sterilized in the, in the press release. That was Boone. That was our was, the dog. He's um our mascot as flipping BC. out. Uh, so they sterilize it with gamma rays before it ever gets to you. So it's like it comes with no chance of infection. Right. Which on a, the brewery scale is important, right? Like you're you're brewing right. yes. five barrels, 15 barrels worth of, of beer. You, you don't want to risk infection. That's true. That's true. Yes. So that's pretty cool. It holds up to 20 liters of harvested liquid yeast slurry. You can see it because it's transparent. I don't know. I think this is really cool. Obviously, it's not really applicable on the homebrewing scale. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe this is like... Uh, it's a start. Yeah, like thought leading towards something 
more homebrew scale relevant. I don't know. There was a guy on my yeah. uh, Discord this week talking about storing yeast slurries in uh, a saline solution, mm. uh, like a saltwater solution, where he buys sterile saline off of like Amazon or whatever and then stores yeast in there. So one liquid pack of yeast can actually inoculate five or six five gallon batches because of storing it and then building up a yeast. Makes sense. Seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I will say that's uh, us home brewers are not scared of working, I feel like, but I feel like there's a point where you go, Oh my gosh, that is that is a lot of work. I do think that there is a world where people can take this tech and start to apply it to homebrewing. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. how many people will actually use it? We could take a demographic of our 28 viewers right now and say how many people would attempt to store their own yeast slurries. But I have a feeling it's not a huge demographic. It's not a big market. But there are people, there are definitely people on my Discord who keep yeast slants in their freezer with like you have to, I mean, you've done, a part of it. You've, you've done a lot of dehydrating your yeast and you know for your bikes yeah, yeah doing stuff like that and obviously very applicable um it's niche though yeah i want to do i did a, uh, a while back i did a video that was testing a yeast slurry previously used with mm -hmm. a new batch mm -hmm. and um i kind of want to do that again i want to do it i want to see how long how far i can push a yeast okay slurry just keep keep pitching on it like the same recipe okay just revamp revamp and just keep it really basic gotcha and just yeah. see how similar it ends up being It'd be interesting. Do you, are you are you wanting to test like if it mutates during mm -hmm. that process because yeah. you know yeast like physiology changes at mm -hmm. a certain alcohol percentage i think it's nine percent the physiology of like how it consumes sugars changes and so would your experiment take that into effect? Would you, would you only brew things that were like eight percent and below? Mm. Would you brew above nine percent and see what that like flux going back mm. and that rubber banding effect looks like, if any exists at all? I don't know. I haven't thought that. Maybe much. do two side by sides. Oh my goodness, you're creating a lot of work for me. BC. Sorry, about you got to calm down. <laughs> Quit giving me ideas. <laughs> all right, what's next in the brews? All right, so this one's interesting. Um, this is all about. This is a, a new, literally new term. I feel like new, new to term, me. New role, new achievement in history. The the honey sommelier. We know wine sommeliers because that's been around for a long time. This uh -huh. is a honey sommelier. This is somebody who is uh, very proficient in <clears throat> in detecting or identifying or characterizing honeys, which uh -huh. I feel like we're. Generally, most mead makers who've been around the field a long time can say, all right, this is orange blossom. I get this note. You know, this is blueberry right. blossom. I right. get this note. But this is like the next level of I am I am proficient all the way through. This is a <coughs> uh, one of two people now, I'll say. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty big thing. She's so, in a pretty exclusive role. Yes. So... This this woman is in Italy, and the program she's in is called the Internet or sorry, not international Italian National Register of Experts in Sensory Analysis of Honey. Fun to say. Uh, the goal was to teach the sensory analysis of honey, so tasting all the stuff, um, similar to what wine is. It's been a program for forty years, and it has three different levels. The final certification of it is a like exam where you do a talking oral portion, but then there's a written portion and excuse me, a blind tasting of honeys, which mm -hmm. was very akin to uh, some people in my life recently. I did something <laughs> kind of cruel with them. You did, yeah. <laughs> and um, so you basically taste all these honeys, yeah, and you must identify the botanical source of eighteen honeys by 18 smell. Eighteen honeys. And taste alone. <laughs> I think I could do like five. Yeah, it's. I... So I could, I could do orange blossom. I could do blueberry. I got honey sticks. We could put this to the test I could right do now. buckwheat. Uh, I could do carrot blossom. I could do yeah. coriander okay. blossom. So there's five. Yeah. I'd be curious how many I could actually do. The problem is getting getting all those honeys and then setting it up. That test alone would be crazy to set up because be you get expensive 18 too. Honeys. Yeah, that's that's not easy to get. So this lady, point being, has uh, passed through this oral, this uh, written portion, and the blind tasting, and she is one of two people in the in the United U States, United States, yeah, 
possibly a whole world, arguably, <laughs> who is is certified as this honey sommelier. That's pretty epic. So one of the cool things in this article, and, and these links will end up in the description eventually. You can also just Google this. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure there's not a lot of articles about honey sommeliers. <laughs> Uh, but one of the cool things is she talks about how in wine tasting, you you swirl the glass, right? Mm. You swirl it so you can build up the aromatics in the glass, and then yeah. you sniff it. You can't swirl honey, right? I'll try. <laughs> so what they do is they it's called smearing. They smear, I probably using a tool, but they smear the inside of the glass so the entire inside of the glass is covered with honey hmm. and that helps perfume the aromatics so that they can smell it better okay that makes sense it's a lot of work for it's the dishwasher of, yeah i oh, guess poor guy. <laughs> sorry homie but i i just think it's so fascinating and you know honestly if this program wasn't in italy more than like bjcp certification i might be interested in doing this because this is such an intriguing area of study <laughs> larry asked me to pull out number nine which very few people know um i maybe Larry, if i can get to it in a moment i will i will absolutely do that we'll put bc to the test i think i know which one he's talking about uh buffalo okay. Jeff did have he said what's y'all's opinion uh on northern Bruin raising the amount the dollar amount to qualify for free shipping by 40 percent do you have an opinion on this? What was the original free shipping amount? Was it sixty dollars? Is it a hundred dollars now? I maybe. I don't recall. I mean, it's one of those things where I come from a life of privilege, where I don't believe <laughs> I don't believe I should ever have to pay for shipping. Right? Like, <clears throat> you should just your stuff, you should just build it into my cost, That's right? True. And so, it, you know, it's. So today, I went down to the brew shop in uh-huh. Oklahoma City. I picked up three Omega yeasts. I, I spent $14 a piece on mm. these. Not cheap. Confirmed. 60 for, to 100 For a liquid pack of yeast. If I was going to buy a pack of yeast on Northern Brewer, it'd probably be $11. Plus, right? yep. Plus probably 10 or $15 for shipping. Yes, yep. And, and then if you're getting the cold pack, they're going to charge you for a cold pack. Yeah, buck, two bucks for a cold pack. They don't throw those in. And so, like... And they're I don't. I don't necessarily want a small business, which Northern Brewer is not. But I don't want a small business to necessarily be out money on a typical transaction because mm. they're covering the cost of shipping. But I also don't want to feel like I am paying exorbitant shipping costs. And there, there are online homebrewing shops that. Uh, oh, did I? Did I, I <laughs> Somehow you've re. That's turned on. Okay. Oh, this is like way behind. Okay, I don't feel so bad. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. So, uh, I don't. I should. I don't. I don't feel like I should have to pay for shipping. Right? Yeah. Like I, I like you build it into the cost, build it. But like I, I want to be able to support a small business and also feel like I'm getting a deal. And and unfortunately, like the weird gray area we're in right now is like I, I'm happier to go to the brew shop locally to support a small business locally yeah. and pay more. Potentially than to pay for. Oh, that's where I was going with it. Is is some folks charge you for shipping if it's glass, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So if you have any part of your order that's glass, you pay for the shipping for that. Right. And so like I just like I don't want any of that rigmarole. I want like Amazon circa twenty nineteen, where, where shipping just, is yeah. is free and it comes in a couple of days. Yeah. And even like it's it's the thing is I guess what I'm saying is I want even like the psychological trick. Of like building it into the rest of the cost somehow, so I don't notice that I'm paying for shipping. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, I think where they get all, I, are they, I'm not uh, justifying anything they're saying they're doing. I think where <laughs> where they probably been burned is like shipping really long distance and then whatever. I just don't buy from Northern Brewer. Support local. Support your lo- local brew shop, especially nowadays. Oh my gosh. Well, and the problem is that so many of these online shops are becoming so, for lack of a better term, corporate. Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's one that I have supported pretty strongly over the years. And it seems like the good staff has left. Mm-hmm. The good deals have left. The good 
affiliate partner program has disappeared. Not, to names. not that I'm going to name any names, but I am not really inclined to support that place anymore because it doesn't feel like they're supporting the community and yeah. it doesn't feel like I'm getting a good deal when I shop there. I think their uh, free shipping went up from forty nine ninety nine to fifty nine ninety nine oh, for yeah, free shipping. Like that, yeah. And so like buy local. Yeah. Buy local as best as you can, even if you've got to drive thirty or forty miles. Yeah. Don't support these businesses that even are even some local places ship. Like our our brew shop city. Ships. Yeah, yep. our we got brew shops who ship around us. So um let's go to the next one. This one I know that you are interested in because I've I, I, I know your tastes. Uh huh. Ah, yes, the art of vinifying grains. We talk about this all the time. He never, I do. He never stops. It's just constant. I vinify like, He's just like, every hey, grain. I'm vinifying this and vinifying that. Every grain I come across. Everything. So this is super interesting. Uh, this, is, this is a long article. This is a deep dive article. And it's like a human interest piece, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy owns a brewery. And his goal has been... To do something different, do something mm. extra with his beer making. And so what that's turned into is very low hop load beers, uh, very intense fruited beers. Like he's, mm. he's growing and harvesting his own fruit for these beers. And his, he's doing a lot of like barrel aging and blending oh, to okay. create... Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. a very cohesive and complex product, mm. right? And so you can see in the article, he says 50% of his work is with the barrels, selecting, tasting, and blending them. 30% is taking care of the fruit, the orchards, the harvest, and 20% is actual brewing. And so the hops he's using are wild grown harvested hops that he is he's picking himself interesting yeah uh he doesn't do any boiling of the hops and oh. <clears throat> what ends up happening is he gets these beers that are much more like a fruited wine or a, a, a high body cider than okay. they are a beer huh. and so i had this friend that said like it's not really like you're making beer it's that you're vinifying the grains you're turning the grains into a wine product huh yeah and you know he sells his bottles 15 16 bucks a pop for a single bottle like this is a very artisanal situation that's happening and i think it's so fascinating because obviously there's like a lot of marketing and buzzing right going oh yeah on. <laughs> But also the idea that you can treat grains in a similar manner that you would treat wine grapes. Right. And, and appreciate the terroir, the, the growing conditions, the fruit blending, the barrel treatment, making sure that you're blending barrels to get a cohesive product. All that is really like next level. That's like very doing the most it is. to me. And so I appreciate the craft of it. Yeah. I would be very curious to try this guy's beers. I'm pretty sure he's in the UK, so that's probably never going to happen for me. But I love that this guy is like, you know what? I'm going to take this thing you know and love, fruited beer, and I'm going to turn it on its head into something that is totally unexpected. Right. And I'm going to do it my own way. Yeah. I'm laughing, sorry, I'm laughing at Baywood, because she said, this vilifying thing sounds far... Sounds <laughs> real good. Good. Yeah. Turn, it, turn the brews into villains. Sorry, we're not we're not trying to make fun of you. Maybe a little bit. Just a, just a tiny, just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. I think this is super cool, and like I'm I, I'm interested. Like, have you thought of using grains in that way? Like, no. even in a braggot. Imagine, like, trying to turn grains into a wine like product and then make a piment out of that instead of a braggot. I'm not I'm not there yet. It's, a, um, I guess yeah, it's like way is, up here. Like right? I, I'm here. That is like. That is up here. I'm. I am not anywhere there. I don't know. Maybe eventually, we'll get there. Um, That's super cool. It is interesting though. Shall we um, talk about what we're brewing? You have so recently um, come upon more time. Well, I say more time in your life. <laughs> yeah. You have my you schedule's have, freed up. Your a schedule's bit. freed up a little bit. Um, what have you been doing? What have I been brewing? So or I'm going to brew, I guess, because now that you have all this free time. The big project that I just started last weekend is a corn whiskey mash. Oh, that's where all that corn went. Project. 
thought you were going to make a lot of corn. <laughs> I mean, it did because yeah. you have to you have to gelatinize the corn, right? So you have to Ugh. cook the corn. I don't like and that. And so that was basically me putting all of the the corn liquor mash stuff. So it's corn uh-huh. and two row and rye all into my mash tun and pouring 205 degree water over that mm. and then leaving it for 24 hours mm. so the corn cooks mm. essentially and then um, you know there's a, a thing called sour mash whiskey okay yeah where what they're doing is like taking some of the last batch and putting it in the new batch to sour it up with uh, the old batch uh-huh. and from all my reading like a lot of the the souring that happens uh, the the acid production that happens those acids become flavor ester compounds mm. during the distillation process. Okay. And so my experiment with this, not to say I'm going to distill this. <laughs> He's never done anything. My like experiment with this was what would happen if I did this entire thing with Philly Sour mm. instead of with regular brewing yeast. Interesting. So I pitched, a, I, I've got 15 gallons of, of mash of of liquor work going right now i pitched philly sour three packets of philly sour one into each and that's fermenting now and eventually this will all become some kind of whiskey through a magical undocumented process uh that will just go from one thing to another thing yeah and uh hopefully end up in a in a oak barrel and we'll see how it goes and we'll see if if philly sour is the key to um, a non-staggered process in in sour mash whiskey? I'm very curious. That's the this. big yeah, project yeah, yeah, I have yeah. going. I got a bunch of other stuff right, planned, right. including I just bought a bucket of uh, of a five. Uh, it's a six gallon bucket of Merlot wine grapes. Okay, hundred bucks shipped. Wow, that's it. Yeah. How much you? How much are you gonna get pressed? Uh, so it says it can make up to about three gallons of wine. So I'm going to mix it with, I've got a bunch of blueberries in the freezer. I've got a bunch of blueberry blossom honey. I'm thinking about doing a, a blueberry Merlot piment of sorts. Mm. That's like a no water. Oh. Yeah. You've been wanting to use that press. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. That's the next big thing. I'm waiting for my wine grapes to arrive. What do you got brewing? Well, I always talk, I've got stuff I've talked about previous, I've got recipes coming out eventually. Summer's about to hit, I'm about to finally release my uh, pina colada meat recipe, I'm getting closer to that, sorry if you've been waiting anxiously, but uh, something anxiously. you won't see for a long time, but I'm going to make VC try, this guy right here, Oh, straight wow. up, Blueberry. hell's bells, let's bring it out, Blue, I, this is something I, a finished video, I've done with it, I want your... Reaction to this blueberry um, carbonated mead. It smells soft. It is. It's soft. It's it does. It smells yeah. pillowy. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, um, what's the vibe you get? Is there vanilla in there? Mm-mm. Meadow foam honey? Mm-mm. It's just the wildflower honey. Blueberries. Mm-hmm. Pectic enzyme, water, a little uh, citric acid. What is this like soft milky you know, I, situation? I don't know, but it is. It's, I like it. I, it is. It is smooth. It yeah, is. no, it's like a like a blueberry frozen yogurt. It's mm-hmm. so like smooth and rich and decadent. I feel like you're lying. To I'm a hundred percent. I can. I'll show you the video. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, no, no, that's dude. That's that's a banger. I felt really inspired recently to do uh, a huh. blueberry mead after I had a superstition as a blueberry cider. They call it the space space box spaceship box cider, and it was like blueberry tart. I mean, they went th- they found like the tartest blueberries I could ever find, and huh. then it was like cloying. And so I was like, how can I do this? <clears throat> I just frozen blueberries maybe i just lucked out and got some really just ripe and beautiful that's very good it is six that's six rich. percent and rich and it's rich i mean it's like blueberry dessert but it's also like light and refreshing uh-huh that's an interesting equilibrium you've achieved there so that's something i've done recently video will be out eventually talking about how to do it first. i like it hey mikey he likes it <laughs> So that's what we're doing. I Good mean, stuff, I, man. I will say that's, I feel like we gave you like 
a little peek into our world. We have a lot going on. Oh, I have, um, so I've got mass, a massive project I'm working on that I don't want to talk about totally yet because it, it's going to be a long time coming and I feel like I do that too often. I talk about yeah. stuff that won't be out until like yeah. December. I mean, it's, you know, it's funny you say that. I had been teasing that, uh, that banana mead video for so long. The banana peels mead. Yeah. And then here, like finally, like a year after I started joking about it, it yep. finally comes okay. out. And it's like, I, most of that time is spent with it sitting in carboys, like in a dark corner of the studio. It's just sitting there. But like, it needs that amount of time, right? Like right. homebrewing is such an interesting niche to try and show on YouTube because of often how long you're sitting on that footage before yeah. anything comes out. Sometimes it could be years for some of these projects. I, so I have a video I'm going to post soon, and at the end of it, I didn't realize how long it had been since I did it, and I had said something about, like, and we're just, we both uh, just passed 40K subscribers or something like that. Mm. That was, like, I don't know, like, seven months ago, yeah. eight months ago at this point. I'm like, man, I got to get I gotta get on it. I'm sharing some of this stuff. Uh, Renea asked what yeast 71B is what my, my choice this time. Um, highly recommend very yep. good for blueberries. Does great for for red berries, tart berries, mm -hmm. specifically. Um, let's get on to the oh, real quick. Teresa oh, oh, Teresa says I just started a maple sap mead. Oh, tapped my maple tree in my yard and replaced the water in a traditional mead recipe with maple sap water. Have you tried this? This is a thing I've been wanting to do. I tried that in Oklahoma. It is very difficult to get a hold of that many gallons of yep. maple sap. Yeah. What I've read is that maple sap is so dilute mm. that you can't really tell. Mm. Like, it needs to be boiled in some way to get the maple sugars condensed enough that you can tell that they're there. Interesting. Okay. And so, Teresa, I'll be curious in your results in this if they differ from uh, what we've heard from others. But Will, our friend, mm. Will, he goes by Chef Online. He's got maple trees tapped. Yeah. And he did... Uh, I believe it was award winning. It was very freaking good. Hmm. Acer Glen, where he did it with his own uh, maple, and it it had to be con consolidated down some yeah. to get the at least to get the gravity in the realm that you would mm. want to to ferment with. That'll be interesting. Yeah. But I'm curious to know your results may vary. They de definitely will vary. I All right, it's just because of the world we live in. This month in, in brewing. Okay. <laughs> well, buddy, I think you're in charge of this first one. Excuse me. I know you've been asking for this BC for a long time. Um, I have. I've been every time BC walks comes walks over. I suppose. Yeah, I walk. He, he I walk over, here, but every once in a while he might walk. Um, <laughs> and I walk by so many salad places I on always, my way here. I, yeah, I always give him pizza. I mean, we always have pizza before this, <laughs> and he always says, "I." I want more salad. And then he says, you know what? I want alcoholic salad. And I, I just, I've never seen any reason for it until recently. There's a video floating on the internet. <laughs> this came specifically came from r slash stupid food yes. on Reddit. These people are mixing booze, hard liquor, and salad ingredients. <laughs> and letting them set for a little bit to, I guess... Try and accumulate some flavor. Yeah, so, so some of the salad ingredients... You need to, you need to go watch this it, whole the, video. The, yeah, the whole the end of it's really kind of the pinnacle of it, for sure. But, like, some of the salad ingredients are dehydrated. So rather than rehydrate them with water, they opted to rehydrate them with vodka. Yes. And it's... the results are interesting, because obviously if you were to <laughs> dehydrate any salad ingredient and then rehydrate it and then uh -huh. add that to the salad, you're going to get some odd results in... Oh my god. I, it is pretty funny. It is funny to see them taste it and... This video had me rolling. So I saw this like two days after our last Homebrew Guys podcast. And I sent it to Garrett and I was like, for the next Homebrew Guys, <laughs> like bookmark this. Is this had me dying. Mm. So like, they have all these salad ingredients. Right. They rehydrate them. They, they, um, apparently you can like s soak... Uh, like romaine lettuce and water to make it crisper. And so they soak theirs in vodka. Oh, uh, yeah. And then they mix all this together. They get the, the salad dressing together. 
But like the moment she puts it on the fork and you can see all the components together and she like struggles Yo, yeah. to put she's it like, in her mouth. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't be doing this. And she's got, she does, yeah. Who would have thought? Think of how many calories you would save by eating alcoholic salad. That's true. Rather than having salad followed by alcohol. Yeah, just one go. One foul swoop. Just get your, get your uh, fill right there. I mean, the next thing they need to do is is get the, the soup and the breadsticks loaded up with That's alcohol, true. too. That's true. Then you, you could do a... Ugh. You've got the trifecta. Not just like Soylent, but alcohol. Like, uh... Oh. I, I do want to uh, insert one in between. That's not. BC does not have pulled up. Oh, God. Okay. Unless, you, oh, yeah. This one. So, I, I... This came from Reddit. Yes. I had to dive in to find where this came from, but I, can, I, I, mean, I, I can, couldn't find a news article on it. I, I, could, I can't get it to you this in time, but... Um, I mean, yeah. Here, drop it over to me. I can... I can... I can... I think so. Yeah, we got technical things. Oh, oh, what's the phone? Oops, that went to your phone. That's not what I want. Don't don't send it to my phone. Sorry, y'all. Here we are. We're doing this live. We were... Did you airdrop it? No, uh, you're not available. I'm not available. Hold on. I'll airdrop it from... So you airdropped it to my phone. <laughs> I'll airdrop it. I'll airdrop it from my phone. It's worth it, y'all. Don't worry. The word airdrop is the uh, drinking game of the night. Yeah, so you if you are, hear the word airdrop, take a con- shot. <laughs> currently consuming something. All right, here we go. We're going to we're gonna send this over to the, uh, the MacBook. <laughs> F it, we're doing it live. It just says waiting. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Okay, so Garrett found this one. I couldn't find a news article on it, so it didn't make its way into what I was trying to do. Okay. Garrett Garrett left to blow his nose. Fit the screen. There we go. Sorry, I had a scheduled nose break. Here we go. We did it. We did it live. Whoa, did it live. All right, so here's what's here's what's going on. My computer is just all... like straight up dying trying to do this. <laughs> oh no! Uh, so <laughs> on screen you might see in a glitchy format. It's, right. it's fine. Everything's fine. In a recently found in a I guess a supermarket somewhere, <laughs> there was a bottle of honey that had a just full on dead bee in it. Full on. Yeah, full on. Just straight. Not up. Not half on. F- full. Yeah, full on. Straight up. Total swag, um, dead bee. And it here's the headline that made me laugh. <laughs> Honey, Mookie says this is a brew channel, not a tech channel, <laughs> folks. <laughs> the, the headline here is Honey Horror. Um, person finds dead bee in honey jar. First of all, it's not a jar, but whatever. And Honey it says, Horror sparks viral outrage. The sparks uh. viral outrage is what's funny because I imagine so many people seeing that and going. What? How could there be a bee in there? That's that, that's cruelty to bees, and it's like <laughs> the whole product is the byproduct of bees itself. Yeah. Like, yeah, when you know how much, it, what is it? Um, I don't, I don't remember what the ratio is, but like one honey bee can only produce like in its whole lifetime, like a, a less than a teaspoon of honey or something like that. It's like a, such a minuscule amount. That's not very much. Yeah. So when you have like. 10 gallons of honey that's yeah. like 100,000 bees. bees or something like that and you're like uh, what's funny so like i said i in looking for this i could not find a news article on it so it didn't make it into into this yep but i found it on reddit and i like that the headline for this was honey horror <laughs> person finds dead bee in honey jar sparks Viral outrage. Viral outrage. But the Reddit post, they were just like, huh. yeah, it's like well, <laughs> nobody cared. Like it, there was also, no viral outrage. What's funny is like, a normal quality of honey. Like when people find honey that has, I've heard this at least. I don't know if you've heard this. When you find like little bits of bee and stuff in your honey, mm-hmm. that's normally a good thing. Yeah. That means it's not been filtered. Sign of quality. Yeah, it's it's normally saying, hey, this honey has been not pasteurized or not filtered in some way that removes anything so it's just funny to me the outrage outrage someone's gotta be outraged all right so next up 
we've got this situation. So, uh, you know, when, when we're looking around for stuff to feature on this show, I try and check all of the sources. Try and check Facebook and Reddit and Discord. So I went over to winemaking talk. You ever hang out on winemaking Every talk? Every day. <laughs> 6 a.m. Morning coffee. Probably one of the bar. oldest winemaking forums on the internet. Oh, I'm not knocking it. I'm on there every morning. Y'all. Every morning. You, you, Catch me you make your cup of coffee <laughs> and you log into your winemaking talk account. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> on winemaking talk, there's this user, and I found this interesting, said that they had a, a 22-year-old country fruit wine that they were tasting. And in my head, like, you think that this is going to be blueberry yep. or blackberry or an apple. Apple wine, you know, something pretty. It's freaking grapefruit wine, of all things. I think mm. I would probably never try to make. And here he's tasting it at 22 years old. You keep it. I'm, I'm going to grab one more thing. Uh, so, here you can see a picture of it. it. says, arguably one of the best wines I have ever made as an amateur home winemaker. This wine, made from fresh pink grapefruit, was fermented and bottled in 2001. How old were you in 2001? Seven. I feel old. I was 16. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I lied. 2001. Uh, it's beautifully clear. You can see that the, the legs on this thing just cling to that glass. Said, uh, Chef's kiss. Almost no browning. Still smelled delightfully of grapefruit and tasted like I remember the last bottle I had 15 years ago. Ooh. Slightly off dry, crisp, balanced acidity, fresh pink grapefruit flavors, and no bitterness from the pith. Pretty cool, man. That's pretty wild. 22 you gonna, year old. Uh, age any of these Jack Kellers for 22 years? Sure, I am not. <laughs> I'd be curious. You should do it. Let us know what happens. Crazy. That is that's pretty wild. Crazy. So, shout out to this user uh, for, for posting about that, for sharing the tasting notes. For, Posting that beautiful picture of it. There you go. That is a great caption. That's a great information. You know what I mean? It wasn't 17 paragraphs as we talked about. You could, yeah. I could, I could. Cons- consolidated, concise, and con- concerted. <laughs> Conglomerated. <laughs> so, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is uh, pineapple mead. It is pineapple mead. I made this on the channel a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We won't say why it's here. We won't say why it's here. Man, that got more pineapple as it opened up, didn't it? It's very pineapple-y. Woo! You're right, though. It's deep. It's like a dark pineapple mm-hmm. color mm-hmm. or flavor. It's not... Primary pineapple. Yeah, it's not, not bright pineapple. and crisp and refreshing and airy. It's it's deep. It's deep. Deep. All right, um, let's talk about Vikings. Listen, let's we've been talk waiting about all Vikings. evening. I know everybody's thought... Man, the, the Vikings did this. we got to talk about it every time. It's mead. <laughs> I mean, we do have a pretty strong mead focus in our community. Yeah, the only people to do it right were the Vikings. I think we're just living, <laughs> we're living in the shadows. Like that. So. I think this is cool. This is from a Facebook group. Uh, actually, our buddy uh, Conrad yes. runs this Facebook mm-hmm, group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, oh, am I? Oh. Mead recipes, techniques, and tips. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a private Facebook group. I, I, I joined it a long time. I don't use Facebook, but I wanted to be able to, like, right. see when people were talking about my channel. So I get on there every now and then. So I, I, I'm I including this because I'm giving props to this person. They want to make mead how they did it in the Viking Age. And this person is not like, oh, I'm pulling some, some <laughs> orange peels and black tea and raisins and my mead. Yeah. No, they're used. They're they made their own. Look at this. They made their own freaking mead bucket with some wood. This is if you're gonna. Uh, oh, okay. New standard set. Okay, if you're gonna yell New at standard. us about about not doing it the Viking way, but then you post a picture of you in a glass carboy, you're out. You you can't <laughs> you can't talk to me. You got to do it in a bucket like this guy before I'll do it in a bucket just covered with a piece of cloth. Yeah, before I'll I'll, I'll entertain your idea. I'm not gonna do it. I'll be honest. It's it a lot of work. He made his own magic stick to stir the yeast in with. He's this got guy these went all out. planks. I, I 
You're using a wild yeast starter from organic dried fruit allowed to ferment for a week before adding honey and spring water. Open bucket, magic stick, hoping for a drinkable meat in the next month. I think it's going to turn out poorly. I don't know that a month is long is long enough. Listen. But I appreciate the dedication. Not going to lie. So, shout out to this person. I hope it goes well. I don't check Facebook regularly, but if y'all see any updates from this person, let us know. Yeah. I would like to come back, circle back to this next month or the month after and see how this went. I I do enjoy every once in a while the Facebook things that pop up. Um, I think what's fun, and it maybe my spirit is just for doing this for so long, and I just I guess I do this through YouTube. I publish my own things. Uh -huh. um, I feel like a lot of Facebook groups are turning into just a picture of somebody taking you know a picture of a glass. Yeah. And then you say, ginger in lime mead. And then people ask in the comments, hey, okay, that's awesome. Recipe question mark? Yeah, and then they're like, no. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, okay, cool. We, we acknowledge that you made this thing. So that's yeah, where no, I've seen no. a lot of it going. I mean, I think social media is on its way out. I think everybody. Ooh, I think bold. people are really. <laughs> homebrew yeah, prediction. Part of my homebrew <laughs> predictions for this month. Social media is. I think it's on its way out. I think people are realizing it's played out. I think they're realizing it's a little weird to post every aspect of their life on the internet. I think some people are. I think there's a whole... I think most people are. Mm. There is definitely a set of people who believe it's very important to be an influencer and think that they are an influencer. Yeah. And they're not, but right. they think they are. And they think that posting the picture of their avocado toast is, is the track to fame That's and true. stardom. Gotta let them know. But I think most people are starting to back away from their use of, of social media. Yep. You know, sure. Anna and I have noticed it because we don't post pictures of our kid on social media. We're very intentional about never posting her face. Mm -hmm. And we have noticed whether people modeling what we are doing or people just deciding on their own. We have noticed friends of ours posting less and less pictures of their kids, even as their kids are aging. Yeah. And I think predominantly by and large people are realizing that social media is documenting them yeah they're not documenting themselves they're being documented that's true yeah. and i think that combined with just like the hustle culture of being involved with social media is like burning people out on the whole idea yeah. of of documenting their lives i could be totally i wrong. like mookie mcs he says social media is out should i unfollow now or later you can unfollow me now <laughs> yeah Go ahead and unsubscribe. <laughs> BC's unsubscribing from, from everything else. I don't so. consider YouTube to be social media. You know, it's like an educational platform. Is it, or but entertainment do what platform. we do a documentation of process. Well, process. But I'm not like... Specifically with us. Look at me. I'm so attractive. Would you like to buy this the underwear I'm wearing today? Follow my affiliate link. BC does not have to say it. He just demonstrates. I just he demonstrate just, it. He does it Suddenly they're all wearing my underwear. <laughs> it's amazing how that works out. <laughs> The most underwear. <laughs> but like my, my doing the most Instagram account. I don't remember the last time I posted on it. I'm so unmotivated really to participate in social media yeah. anymore. And so I think hobby groups are probably going to go that same way. And maybe what we get back to is we were joking about this, but maybe winemaking talk. Maybe we're, we we circle all the way back around to forums for niche topics. Yeah, I think there's a world where it happens. I don't know. I, I don't know. It is weird. I don't really post either, honestly. It just... It's a lot of work. A lot of work for time I'd rather invest other places. I think that's the, the base of it. Yeah. I don't get as much satisfaction out of it. So, I don't know. Gordon Court Jr. says, Some people have a face for TV, some for radio, and some <laughs> for YouTube. Where do you think you and I fall? I don't know. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, stick me on the radio. Oh, man. Crinkled One says, Centralized social media definitely is. Reddit and Discord format seems to be a stronger choice. I would agree with that. I think these, like, kind of discordant social media presences where you can be kind of anonymous, mm. but also jump into communities with shared interests yeah. are probably the next 
logical step in social media versus like attaching your name and your face yeah. and your resume to everything you post. Yeah. Like, I don't know, people who do home distilling. Do you really want to be discussing that in the yeah. same space that your employer might be your friend on your social media? Would you, if you were making whiskey in your backyard, would you want your boss to be your friend on Facebook while you're posting about that? And so I can see that where, you know, yeah. going onto a discord where everything's kind of within a, a yeah. walled off community. I'm thinking about our, our good friend, friend of the show. He's been on a couple of times. You might've seen him. Contram. Um, Man, I love that guy. Yeah, he comes on all... He's just always popping in. Like, check out the previous episodes. You'll find a couple yeah, of... Yeah, like, basically people. every episode of Home... He Home calls Home in. Home. He we, calls we have, in. I, like... I put him on Do Not Disturb tonight. Not tonight. Right. Yeah, okay. not tonight. Um, Heart of Darkness this. Yeah. Heart of Darkness that. Like, you know, how How did he get famous? Was it the book? <laughs> How did he become the godfather? I mean, he he created the the name for people who make mead. We are the cups. <laughs> the cups. The cups. <laughs> um, oh man. No, but really though, like, Shram started really really hitting the scene back in what twenty. I don't know what when did the book come out was it twenty. 20- 15, 2012, something like that. Really, I guess social media was a thing. I but think he wasn't... the book came out. I mean, maybe like second or third edition, but I think the book came out. Before that? Pretty early on, early 2000s. So he wasn't like, I mean, didn't have a YouTube channel. He wasn't posting anything. Like, I feel like people also weren't trying a lot of his mead, but the book became his thing. Yeah. So that just shows like, if you are a informational source that is hopefully providing good information, <laughs> you can... Kyle says it's 2003. Faywood says, that's pretty amazing that y'all chat with Ken <laughs> every week. Every week. Just look back at the last episode. I can't get the guy out of my DMs, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Oh, man. So Nick asks, how do you two balance homebrewing and your work lives? Do you discuss the hobby with coworkers or keep it separate? Certain coworkers. My coworkers love it they we're, love to we show have up with worlds their... though i think my my job is less friendly towards the um hobby um and i feel like <sighs> you know recently though it's some like i did share some stuff with my some of my co-workers mm-hmm. i did a um, um milkman style drop off okay at their house i just yeah. said hey some, shoot me your address cans. and i just whoop, here's some cans and uh, drop some off and so that was kind of fun i have shared some stuff but i uh, very rarely do I end up sharing a lot of information or okay. things with them? And it's not because I don't want to. There's just... My coworkers know that if they bring a six-pack holder to my house, that they will leave oh, yeah. with that plus some. I... I yeah. That is the... Re- the relationship is curiosity of like, oh, wow, cool, you do that? And then also, can I get some free booze? And I'm happy to provide. Right. My, my rule is always, yes... As long as you bring me back washed out empties. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Steven says the fact that you put Ken on Do Not Disturb. Wow. You got it. I mean, the yeah, you got, gets He's relentless. Yeah. Relentless. That's all right. That's all right. We don't hold it against you, Ken. We are. Dude's thirsty, we man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, man. I let Ken cut in front of me at Mazer Cup. We did, yeah. That was fun. That was exciting to see him. I like and him really, I mean, there was a couple other other people there too that I were um, internet. I'll say, I'll put so it's just internet celebrities to me that I saw. <laughs> yeah, were we part of that group? I don't know that we were internet we're, celebrities there. Nobody really knew us. We had a little group. We had a little cluster. We, had a we, we went bar hopping with a couple of them. <laughs> that's true. Afterward. That's true. So you want to. Hang out with us till 2 a.m.? Buy us cocktails at a sketchy jazz club in downtown Kansas City. But it has to have an upstairs, downstairs, and two different two pianos. Two pianos. It has to be <laughs> a, an upstairs band and a downstairs band. Otherwise, we're not showing up. That place was a trip, man. It was called, like, the Green Dress or something like that. That, blo- that vlog was arguably one, it was one of the fun, funnest things I've edited in a while. Just because it was so dumb. That was a good time. 
Renee says, I share with my coworkers. They have brought me honey to make more and always bring back my bottles. That's key. It's key it's to true. make sure you get washed out empties back. Also, can I will say cans have been nice. And then I'm like, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm gonna borrow your canner at some point. I'll hey, we'll uh, we'll split a thing of cans. We'll split a thing of cans. They come in like a pack of two hundred. Music to my ears. You think I got two hundred cans worth of stuff? Yeah. Larry says I'll pay two dollars to see BC try that honey. Oh, what honey? Uh, um, it, you'll have to he'll have to improv for a second because I got to go through and I got to do a little digging. I don't BC, know. do we have time for that? It's eight already. Let me let me look real fast. BC, let's talk about something. What are we going to talk about? This week, we were talking about our favorite thing. And that is YouTube commenters. Chatters. Slash internet. Internet. Internet commenters. Constructive criticists. Yes. Yeah. I would love for you to enlighten us a little bit on... On that, what what have you noticed? Uh, what are some of your f- pinnacle favorite moments of uh, YouTube history? So you know today, the my my kid, she's in swim lessons, right? Yes, little kid, she goes to swim school. I'm still listening. Don't worry. Oh, I know you're listening. Oh, I know. And so she swims with her mom, and so I'm like sitting in the parents' area behind a pane of glass. And it's the same thing every week. They do the little song. They swim in a circle. They take them up. They dunk them down. I'm kind of numb to the whole situation. You know, the kid's having fun. I'm bored. So usually I'm just like reading the news. Whatever. Seeing what's happening in the world. So today I stumble on r slash mead. And there's a post there. It has since been deleted. But there's a post there, and it's about a couple of our colleagues uh-huh. in the in the BrewTube space. I'm not going to name any names because it's not it's not relevant to the story. But you know, every now and then you see one of these posts about somebody else in the BrewTube community, and then you start getting that like that tingle, that little oh, oh no, the tingle. You know the the tickle behind your leg. Yeah. You know behind the knee, and you say, I I have a feeling my name is in here somewhere, right? So you start you start scrolling through. Yep. You happen to catch that doing the most in there. Uh-huh. And and you just can't help but read what somebody else thinks about yourself, right? Tight system seven seven four. Yeah, I'm reading their username. Shout out to you. Says interestingly enough. I have noticed doing the most seems very skilled, like university level, yet I don't watch him at all. I just can't stand the dude. (laughs) I have watched him a few times, but I just can't tolerate to even see him because I, I so deeply dislike him, but that's on me. He's not a pompous idiot or whatever. Just because I personally don't like him. That's a me problem. And then there's this reply that says, I also can't stand the guy. Useful info, but every time he speaks, I hate him a little more. He seems like such a smug little prick. <laughs> I had... So, the the closest comment I've had to this... <laughs> somebody that was like commented one time they said they couldn't watch my stuff because they reminded me reminded, reminded them of a bully that they had in oh, high school I remember that, that was one. or somebody they knew in high school that was just like me and they like hated the guy and they're like I just keep I, I can't help but think of whatever the guy's name Richard or whatever the guy's name was what a dick <laughs> <laughs> and I was like they literally refused to watch my content because they I guess PTSD of the lunch money getting stolen from this guy so this other comment says doing the most seems arrogant and matter of fact but he's very technical and extremely knowledgeable you know we had talked about this a little bit before and I, I made the comment and I think it's still true I am way more outwardly I, I will I will tell people and say things like this this specifically is stupid or whatever like I am more prone to call out things than he is 
So the the fact that people are looking yeah. at him and going, man, this guy is just you know thinks so the, 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 of himself. Man, I guess people don't are not seeing me <laughs> say these things. So that's weird. I don't yeah, understand. I've been called pompous. Yeah, we have smug, a arrogant. What's the the T-shirt I made? Do you remember that? I printed out a comment from your channel oh. on a T-shirt. I don't even remember what it said. I don't remember either now. Yeah. I, like, it's weird. Most people seem to love me. Yeah, yeah. No, you I, know? I, I think... I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a relatively innocuous presence, but maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm a like People douchebag. are reading you in a weird way, I guess. But, like, when I do get criticism, it is so biting. It is so intense. Oh, my gosh. I, that's the worst thing about... <laughs> yeah. It's not like, huh, I don't like his bald head. It's too shiny. It's like... <laughs> He's a dick who puts puppies in bags and throws them in creeks. <laughs> like it's so intense. You get so you get those weird comments, and my, my comments are just like funky. <laughs> I, I don't even. know. I tried to find some examples this evening, and normally, like when I see stuff that is just like outlandish, we'll we'll talk. Yeah, we you know, we just, text it back and forth. And I was looking for some examples, and I I couldn't find any in the immediate recent yeah. past, but. Man, I, I get some weird stuff. It's just like, was this guy on something when he was writing it? Or... Yeah, uh, the but... ones on Reddit seem to like sting the most because those people seem like the most lucid. Mm -hmm. If I get a weird one on YouTube, generally oh, I'm yeah. like, yeah, you're just some like dingus who had too much to drink and English isn't your first language. So I'm not going to be like offended that you called me like, you know a donkey butt or whatever but like the people on reddit are like he's college educated and yeah. also when they... he smokes weed with <laughs> kittens i don't know like it's like it's always such like weird like very intense direct like you're it's a worse. bad person committing misdemeanors yeah. It's one thing when someone just insults you but then they like com somewhat compliment you and then in the same breath be like yeah but, but you're like, oh. also, <laughs> you regularly wear your pants backwards. Like, it's weird stuff that's just like, ouch, I don't, why did you say that about me? Just to sting. But this also, right here, they did it. They, they achieved. <laughs> also, I don't really care that much. I don't have time to be offended by the internet. Um, this is, shout out to Larry. I'm not spoiling what all this is about, but I've recently come upon a, a mass quantity of honey sticks in my life. <laughs> And this is a, an interesting uh, flavor that Larry wants you to try. Okay. And see if you can identify um, what is happening. Although... <laughs> that is salty. Okay. Is this caramelized? No. Gross. This is a good honey test to see. We're studying to be honey sommeliers. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've, I've got my oral exam tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I can't um, <laughs> It's just salty. It's kind of bitter. Kind of caramelly. Yep. What would you guess it is? You're on the right track. I'll just go ahead and spoil I mean, I don't know. Uh, honey with salt in it. S salt and honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's here. You know. It's very. All right, I'm gonna eat, eat saline. Let's get away from total insanity. Ah. One more. Okay. Another honey stick. This one's extra, Larry. You didn't have to pay two bucks for this one. This one is much more dense. Mm. This one's like liquidier. Yeah, this yeah, one yeah. is thicker. Well, I'm sure there was some post-processing to be done with salted honey. I'm sure they did some interesting things playing the game. I would guess this is like a clover or wildflower. Clover honey? There you go. You know your honey. You're just halfway there. Is it really? Honey. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, there's nothing sommelier. nothing exciting about this one at all. No. No, I tried to pick something that was a little more basic. Pretty tasty. Yeah. It is good. I'll put that on a tortilla. Totally worth the $2. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, the salted honey is not bad. It's just like it's it's shocking initially. Yeah. When you're not expecting. Oh no, right. Yeah. <laughs> but we were we were recording an episode of something earlier, and I kept commenting that it tasted salty. 
No spoilers. Won't tell you what it was, no but maybe my mouth was like a little bit acclimated oh, no, to back. <laughs> back there. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. Yeah. Forty six viewers. This, this Hi is everybody. Night this show. is a, a great opportunity for you to go and smack that like button. Uh huh. Helps us out. And the subscribe if you're not subscribed somehow. Yeah, subscribe to this channel and go in, uh, in your search bar up at the top. Search for Homebrew Guys Clips. Oh, yeah. We and need subscribe. Right now. We need at least, let's get up to 46 subscribers on that because <laughs> we're rocking like 29. Yeah. We get 17 of y'all to hop on over there. Garrett likes to cut together clips from the show and release them on there. So every now and then you get a little jolt of like, oh, yeah, I remember that funny thing. Or if you missed it and you whatever. just want the highlights, I normally go through and just hit the little... The good stuff. Well, I mean, it's all good. Or bad stuff. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> the the moments. So, um, let's see if we can get to 46. I won't, I might hold you to it. We'll see. Mookie MC says, BC and Garrett are nothing like a dead bee in a jar of honey. I really appreciate that. Okay, I'm well, gonna, I'm counter for y'all. 29 subscribers. We'll see what happens. And in... I'm going to add nothing like a dead bee in a jar of honey to my resume. I'm going to add that to the... The, uh... What do they call that at the top? Your, uh, your like announcement line. Your, mm. your, your headline. I don't. Think you're not driving home, right? Uh, no. See, then if we get to 46 by the end of this, uh, we'll take a shot. Shot of absinthe? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was a different time in life. Man, so I, we went to this place uh, for our Valentine's date the day after Valentine's, called Gray Sweater. Have you heard of it? Uh oh, it's the it's got a like a. Black Walnut is the yeah it's next yeah. door to Black Walnut uh -huh. yeah so it's a uh, it's owned it's uh, owned by a Jamaican guy a chef and it's not our chef sorry not our chef and we we did the seven course meal you can do also a ten course meal holy cow and uh, it is not cheap <laughs> no uh, but seven we also did so cocktails with it so oh, Anna oh. did mocktails because Anna doesn't drink and I did cocktails and I told him I wanted just like bourbon or rye kind yeah. of family of cocktails for the evening. One of them was an absinthe con cocktail where they poured absinthe in the glass, like turned it and then dumped it out and then mixed the cocktail and poured that in the glass. The entire thing just tasted like licorice. It was very different. Yeah, to I'm not drink. a, I mean, the one I had that one time was like black, I mean, just chewing some black, black licorice. That yeah, was it, was all it was so <laughs> difficult to drink. And of course they came over and they were like, what do you think about your cocktail? And I'm like, oh, mm, it's so tasty. <laughs> oh, I love licorice. Uh, <coughs> it was the worst part of the evening, but the, the food there was really phenomenal. I, we went to the black walnut one and we were like, we had, my wife and I had a grand plan to like, well, we're going to do like a big meal. We did it for our anniversary. That's what we did mm -hmm. for it. And um, we ended up doing like just two appetizers and then like a salad. And, like, we were just like, we're going to start with this. We're going to make our own little fun little adventure. We couldn't even finish all that food. Like, we got through, like, the two appetizers and the salad, and we were like, yeah. I, I can't do any more. <laughs> when we went to Black Walnut, we, on the on the recommendations, uh -huh. we asked for mead. Because mm -hmm. we went with uh, David and his partner. Um, and they, 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 the only mead they could get a hold of was Camelot, which actually was not that bad for a traditional. Okay. Curious, and yeah. we we drank two bottles of it throughout the evening, but they they kind of like catered the meal around our like mead preference to try and like make okay. sure things worked with it. But they have a, a did you see the uh, tomahawk steak while you were there? Mm, yep. They like to walk it through really dramatically. I mean, it's like a Flintstones, like it's yeah. huge. It's made for two people. Yeah. Pretty legit. We should go there. Let's do it. It's a good time. Their food is phenomenal. Little um, subscriber update. I can I can even sweeten the deal, y'all. I, I don't think a shot of whiskey is very interesting. I've got a I see it in my my peripheral. A bottle of birthday cake mead. That sounds gross. Uh huh. <coughs> we'll uh we'll open it up. <coughs> Get us to forty one subscribers on the Homebrew Guys podcast. Class. Kyle asks any of y'all go to an Ethiopian restaurant for a meal and Tej. We have one Ethiopian restaurant yeah, in Oklahoma know. City that I know of. Mm. I've been there. Okay, yeah. I did not get Tej while I was there. I don't know if they have Tej there. Mm. But something worth exploring. We don't have a big Ethiopian presence in Oklahoma City. I think um, when it comes to uh, ethnic food, 
like Vietnamese and okay, Korean yeah. are probably the biggest yeah. influences. Oh, well, by followed the, by Mexican. We went down. I was looking for something else. Not I wasn't looking for other things, but we went to the uh, Asian market down in um, uh, what's the place called? Super Cow Win. Super Cow Win. Super Cow Win. And uh, I was looking for we didn't find it, but um, passion fruit and lychee mm-hmm. for a recent project. It wasn't there, but the whole experience was interesting. You didn't Asian find lychee markets, there. Not in the we May, it might be out of cheese. season. Uh, yeah. You needed canned or well, I'm following it. Someone's recipe. He's using got canned, it, and so got it, got it, got ended it. up buying it. It's fine. online. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't have canned. That, but there, it is. I will admit, Super Cow is one of my favorite restaurant or favorite um, grocery experiences. Hmm. It is very difficult to navigate. It was weird. I was like looking through, and then like, of course it's. I mean, it must be, a lot of it's in English, of course. But then like, there's a lot of stuff. I'm like, wow. Well, like we like to get canned jackfruit to make okay. jackfruit pulled pork, and I don't know how many times I bought jackfruit there in a can. Thirty two, y'all. Thirty two. Keep it rolling. That's every 21. single time, it is not where I think it is. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Every single time. I I hadn't been there before, but my wife had, and so she was. She was more familiar than I was, but it was it was quite the interesting. Um, I love Super Cow Man. Thirty three update. Woo. Teresa asks, "Hey guys, where do I find low ABV yeast?" You might find you might get lucky with an ale yeast. You might find one that kicks yeah. down to nine, ten, maybe. Yeah, but low ABV. That's low ABV. Uh, low ABV. You're not going to find an eight percent, seven percent, six percent. Um. Probably not helpful here, but Scott Labs just published their 2023 winemaking handbook, which has a ton of information about yeast and tolerances uh-huh. and uh-huh. uses and best practices and all that. Uh, always a good reference for yeast to mm-hmm. check, but those, yeah, those are mostly wine yeasts, and most of those are going to be yeah able it, to crush 12% or higher. Ale yeast are your only bet, but you're not ever going to get below. Like, I think when most people think low ABV, they're like, I want a 6% yeast. You're not gonna. You're yeah. not gonna find something that caps out at six. And if somebody tells you that bread yeast is the the answer to that, not accurate. I do love that. Um, some people are like, "Yeah, my bread yeast stopped at six. And the, some people are like, "My bread yeast stopped at twenty eight. <laughs> you're like, twenty eight. What? <laughs> yeah. You're like, there's not a. There's there's obviously something up here. Renee says canned jackfruit pulled pork is how I found out I'm allergic to jackfruit. Oh. Pulled pork, interesting. Yeah, so to, to do the jackfruit pulled pork, you you take it out of the can, you drain it, you put it in the pan with some barbecue sauce, yep. cook it, mash it, put in a little bit more barbecue sauce, keep cooking it. It takes about 20, 30 minutes, right. and it is just like a pulled pork sandwich. Mm. Like, it's meaty and savory and rich. It's interesting. not fruity at all. Super good. Makes a good, like, sloppy joe. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like it. Oh, I'm behind again. Keep looking at this like it's current. <sighs> well, BC, do you have any homebrewing predictions? It doesn't seem like we're going to get eight more subscribers on our homebrew. I guess guys no. Podcast, I guess we're not but... taking a shot tonight. Uh, predictions, homebrewing predictions. Yep. What do you think? Let's talk about this. What do you think the next big in 2023? Hmm. The development of mead specifically. Since mead that's where specifically. We, where do you think we're going? Do you think it's? Do you think we're we're headed straight into session territory? Everyone is just going straight in sessions. Like that's that's the new norm. Or... I mean, that's the big thing right now. It's, I mean, even our last episode, we drank that Chaucer session mead. Like everybody's moving towards sessions. Yeah. Oh, that was a comment that I received the other day. The Chaucer's one. We haven't uh-huh. talked about that. Um, I tasted. I did a tasting of a Chaucer's mead about two years ago and in my tasting i said it was so sweet it was just like cloyingly sweet way too sweet in general and um somebody commented and said i can't believe you thought this was sweet yeah not spelling sweet correctly i will add sweat um i i had to add honey sweat (laughs) i had to add honey 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 (laughs) honey To make this palatable. The dude added more honey to Chaucer's, which if you had Chaucer's, it is like liquid honey yeah, as it stands. Yeah, that's sweet. So that dude... Mookie asked, what channel are we supposed to subscribe to? We're talking about the Homebrew Guys uh, Clips. Pod- yes, Podcast Clips. It's called the Homebrew Guys Podcast Clips. Forwards. Yeah. It's just a channel that shares clips from, from these shows. We're only five away, I'll say. Only, only five, five away, my goodness. 
Uh, yeah, I, th- I think we're, I mean, the, the big thing is we're, we're about to slip into summer, springtime summer. Yes. And so session meads are going to be all the rage. I've got a oh, series I'm that I've been dabbling in where I was going to do some beginner-friendly session meads. Yeah. Because uh, everyone wants to make them. Everybody wants one-gallon recipes where they can bottle condition, that sort of thing. I am going to predict that the next year is going to move into honey varietal specific recipes. Oh. So you know how, like, interesting the wampus cat braggot uh-huh. really relies on wildflower and buckwheat. Uh-huh. I think we're going to see more development from that. Like you were joking about with meadow foam honey. I think mm. we're going to see people go top three meadow foam honey recipes. Mm. Things you can make with meadow foam. Interesting. Okay. Or like, you know, I've been working on this carrot blossom traditional where yeah. you stress out a Belgian yeast to get those carrot cakey flavors in the carrot blossom okay. honey. Okay, yeah. I, th- I think that's going to be more of a focus of not just saying like, how do I make a delicious blueberry mead? Okay. But what can I do with coriander blossom honey? I hope that's true because I've been really diving deep. I mean, I have a lot of coriander, coriander and other varietal honeys that I've been playing with, with, with recipes. So I hope that's true. We are one away, y'all. Homebrew guys podcast clips. Chris Pop asks, over. never had a mead. Ooh. Any good meads I can try that I can get at a store? You know, Redstone Meadery is probably a better bet to start with, in my opinion. And it's pretty widely available. It's a Colorado-based mead. Comes in swing top bottles. In swing tops, yeah, so you can save them. Um, pretty good flavors. It's normally carbonated, so it's it's a good little in, in starting point for you. Mm-hmm. That's where I would start, and then if you can find more, of course, you know, go crazy. But there's a lot of stuff, I'll be honest, there's a lot of stuff commercially that... Sucks. It's not, yeah, it's not good. I would check out some of the stuff from Superstition or Sap House. Yes. Usually yeah. you can find either of those two at a, like a really big box wine store. Superstition, almost definitely. Uh, they make good stuff. If you're into session stuff, like if you're into like light beers or uh, like lighter side IPAs mm-hmm. or fruity IPA type beers, I would check out Meridian Hive. They're available in seven or eight different states now. You might be able to get it shipped into your state. Meridian Hive does some really incredible session meads, particularly their fruited stuff. I don't really like their flowery stuff as much. Uh, But their honey session mead or uh, their peach or their lemon, the blackberry, all really fantastic. Yeah, they did put out some good stuff. BC? Yes, sir. When you came over today, I know... I forgot to tell you guys this. This BC walked over. Well, sorry, I keep saying walked over. I mean, I don't know. I didn't he took see, the bus. I didn't see the car he came in, so I'm guessing he walked. Um, he said, you know, I really have been looking forward to a birthday cake mead. Specifically, a three-year-old birthday cake. Mm, mead. Yeah, three-year-old, three-tiered cake. Mm. Yeah, birthday cake. I mean, he loves birthday cake. It's his favorite flavor. I do. I mean, it's basically all I eat these uh-huh. days. And he loves specifically three-year-old birthday cake. Mm-hmm. And I, he, it yeah, is I almost do. like... Freezer's full of the them. The world just wanted this to happen. Today, we have a three-year-old birthday cake. <sighs> Fantastic. Meat. I, and I know please, you've been waiting. Please waiting. tell me that this is made with amaretti flavorings. All, <laughs> I couldn't even say it. I almost said all natural. <laughs> <laughs> amaretti is... <laughs> Shout out to the tonight's sponsor, Amaretti, for creating um, this wonderful um, interesting combination. I uh, you have yourself some um, caramelized <laughs> orange, stinks. orange blossom honey with birthday cake flavoring. It smells burnt. So this is caramelized orange blossom and yeah, I don't know why I caramelized it. Like, what is wrong with me? Why did I decide in that moment that adding? <sighs> I don't know. Renee says I just want one to blow my socks off. I think that the lemon and the honey flavor of Meridian Hive are their best flavors. Their rose is not my favorite. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like a hibiscusy thing. Yeah, mm, not, not a big fan. It looks like we got, uh, shout out to Texas Longhouse Mead. It looks like he. I don't know. I got three medals tonight uh, at uh, Texas Media. Maybe. Great. That's what, which is awesome. 
That's a that's someone in our community. That's a great thing to celebrate. It's big okay. Time. Are you ready? You don't drink all this. I mean, you can, but nice. I don't really want to. Mm. I think maybe the flavor molecules the, of the birthday cake it must have gone away because it, it's not that like it tastes like a boche. Yeah, it just tastes like meadow foam. Like you add a little meadow foam honey to a boche. Not, not good. Not particularly great. Not as bad as it smells. No. Ooh. Three years old. Three years old. What a win. What a win for the community. Yeah. You know, if you really... I got a video for it. If you really want to go make it. I know people are lining up out the door to make it. Okay. What are your predictions? Um. Okay, my prediction is that hopped meads are going to, like... Maybe this is hopeful in some ways. Hopped meads are going to be more regular. Okay. That there will be... Maybe not in the next month. But... In the future, there'll be some regulations that open up the doors for hops to be incorporated into mead in the future. At the commercial level? At a commercial level. Doubt. I highly doubt it, too. And again, this is why I said it's wishful thinking. But it would be really cool to try some hopped meats from other Mm -hmm. places. Because I I like hopped meats. I hope so. I don't think it's going to happen necessarily. Because I do like hop meads too, but... It is wishful. That regulation's been there for a long old time. A letdown. Mookie, sorry. Where's the unsubscribe button? Um, Good Crusader asks... Excuse me. Are there any braggot recipes that would be good with wildflower honey? Um, You know, Barack Obama... (laughs) The... No, the, the White House Honey Ale... Was like his beer while he was president, and really? they they brewed it in the White House. And I remember when the recipe came out uh, for homebrewers, people were raving about it. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that just uses like regular wildflower clover honey. So you might look at doing something like that. I think they brewed in buckets. I don't know. Probably White con- House. Probably conical. You think they had stainless steel? You think they went full fledged stainless steel setup brew room? Uh, I'm gonna guess they had buckets, but. They brewed it in the White House, which I think is cool. That makes me feel better about having buckets. Well, White House is using buckets. Well, I'm going to use buckets, too. Why not? So you might try that. Um, I've got a orange blossom braggot recipe that I have a feeling you could use wildflower and just, like, maybe do a little orange zest mm-hmm. in primary. Like, maybe a quarter of an orange yeah. worth of zest to zhuzh it up with the orange flavor just a little bit. That's my prediction. Like so, that. Fun Pants says, my local cider joint sells hopped meads. Not sure how they managed to get around that. You can, that's a clarification. You can sell mead made with hops. It's just the amount of hops is mm-hmm. regulated. So, it's like one pound of hops for every thousand gallons of mead. And so, what that, for like a five gallon batch, I measured it out one time. It's like six hops pellets. It's a very small amount of hops. So you have to be like really intentional about how you use those hops yeah. on a commercial scale to get that flavor. If you're not abiding by that rule, you are making it against federal mm. regulation and opening yourself up to... Uh, what I make could the, not be legal, unfortunately. Is it TTB now? Maybe. That governs that? But no, like when I make mine, I'm using way more yeah, hops Yeah, I use like that. two ounces for... For, for five a five gallons, gallons. Yeah. yeah, yep. So, I don't know. That's my prediction. I hope it's it's wishful thinking, but who knows? Well, BC. Oh, that's very sweet. Oh, Faye says I want to make your OB brag at BC. It is legit, so good. That's true. She had. She, I think I sent her with bottles when she was here. We're still hopefully gonna have. Uh, well, we talked about it today. Maybe Mandy will one day be able to join us. For a homebrew, homebrew people. Homebrew folks. Fol- folks, there we go. Folks podcast. We'll yeah. change the name up for that one episode. One episode, homebrew folks. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for opening up your home to this. Maybe at some point we'll get back to broadcasting live on location. Yeah, that's our plan. We're, we're, um, we're, we're, we're between change. homes. We're between homes. <laughs> literally between homes um, for our, our live shows. Yeah. But again, you can catch us at... Um, well, I guess you haven't heard about this. I, have we talked about Hoppy Camper tonight? I don't think we have. 
We shot some promos for it. Yeah, I was going to say, we did some stuff there earlier. There's a thing called the Hoppy Camper Homebrew Expo, which is in Guthrie, Oklahoma. If you're local to Oklahoma. Local to Oklahoma or Texas or any surrounding state necessarily, if you want to drive down or up to us um, on April fifteenth. There's mm-hmm. it's a not just to see us, but also there's a ton of really great home brewers who we all meet up at Guthrie, and you serve stuff. We're literally gonna have kegs of stuff that we make. We're bringing fifteen gallons of session mead with us, ready to serve to you <laughs> and to try. So you can get that, plus there's commercial breweries and all these other things there. The event is like 40 bucks, but you get a t-shirt, you get a tasting glass, you get uh, literally as much free booze as your body can handle, and uh, it's a great time. So Hoppy Brew... Hoppy Camper. Hoppy Camper, sorry. had that Hoppy Camper Home Brew Expo, there we go. Um, you can check that out, check it out online, find us there. Yeah, it's a great way to try our stuff. Otherwise, you're probably not going to get to try our stuff normally because we don't really just ship it out or give it out because that would be a rabbit hole. Be a lot. Doing. Mookie says, new to home brewing, does the palate become more detailed with experience to determine all of these flavors? I can attest to this. We did a, a palate expanders episode tonight where we, again, taste homebrew stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm getting better. You are um, getting better. You're. I was impressed with the second tasting, honestly. You you pulled out some stuff that I thought I was really throwing curveballs at you. We were. We had some stuff that it, it gets easier. That's the only way it gets easier and better. Yeah, yeah. It's just part of it is exposure. Yeah. You know what you does can, this taste like after fermentation? Oh, now I know. You know, it's kind of that situation. Right. Like, if you were to try five different kinds of jam. You could probably tell strawberry jam from blueberry jam, from yep. blackberry jam, yep. from orange marmalade. And tasting mead is kind of the same way. Yep. Where if you taste enough meads made from enough honeys and you taste enough honeys separate from those meads, eventually you get an idea for what flavor becomes mm-hmm. what thing. And you can kind of understand the the language of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just, it takes time and exposure. And, you know, we judge mead competitions. We judge mead stampede. And still, I feel like every year our palates are growing and getting better. Yes, it is. It's, I mean, never ending. I think people who have even done stuff for 40 years are really good at it, but you can still learn. So many, there are thousands of variables and opportunities to try new stuff. So I think you just have to do more. Uh, Faye throws a shout out to the Sip and Saver deck. If you don't Woo! know what that is, Sip and Saver. that's uh, a Kickstarter I did. You need a theme, right? You need a theme song. I need a theme song for Sip and Saver. Actually, <laughs> you really captured the spirit of it. It's a <laughs> it's a a card deck with essentially every visual taste and smell descriptor you could use to describe a home brewed thing, and. Uh, there's a website set up for you to buy them at saver.org, S-A-Y-V-O-R.org. You can go there and do that. If you're from Oklahoma, don't, because I'm, I'm, I'm shutting down my sales tax permit for that. Oh, so yeah. so yeah. You, you won't be able to, to buy them if you're in Oklahoma, uh, but you can hit me up and pay cash. But the whole, I, I, I'm done with it. I have a lot of those decks left, though, so if you want one, you, you, shoot me an email. Yeah, t- yeah, check it out. You'll find them. Yeah, we, we can make it happen. All right, let's get off of here. I'm tired. Yeah, and you're not driving again, so this is nice for you. Word. Um, Homebrew Guys podcast clips, not just for the haha memes, but really, if you want to catch up, audio way to listen to this. If you don't have time to watch the video or catch the live stream, um, post or during, great way to support us and uh, our own individual channels. Mm-hmm. If you are somebody who doesn't already follow us, that is okay, but we put out a lot of great content work really hard to put out really good content for you and um no doubt i i, I can confidently say that our recipes are are tested and uh not just tested in creation but in tasting as well and people yep. people are often uh, pleased so check us out man made mead do the most do the most obviously you're on this channel right now so you're probably subscribed but if you're not and you're listening to audio go subscribe We'll see you next... Next month. Next month. Cheers. Happy brewing.